Welcome to episode 20 of SpaceX in the News. Today we have two main topics we're going to talk about, both of which have different subcategories. The first topic is Boca Chica, Texas, and what's been going on down there with Starhopper, Starship, and Stargate. And the second topic is Elon Musk and what he's been up to lately. Let's get started. So Starship's prototype, nicknamed Starhopper, has been sitting on the launch pad down in Boca Chica for the last few weeks. However, just a few days ago, SpaceX began fueling up the tanks in preparation for its first hold down test. Footage has been captured by the locals of venting and purging of the gas, and needless to say, it has been quite chaotic down there lately. Local press swarmed in in their attempt to capture footage of this first static test, and local resident Boca Chica Maria told me that they've been closing the road off at will, and there were some security breaches, so they threatened to arrest anyone that got on the road without a pilot car to escort them. And unfortunately, she said that there were drones swarming everywhere. Most likely something that SpaceX didn't really appreciate. You know, this is a lot of generated excitement for a rocket that's not even going to lift off the launch pad. It was always the plan that Starhopper would be tethered down to the launch pad for this first test. But despite all the generated excitement, still nothing happened. And then Maria told me that on Thursday, a generator failure caused SpaceX to have to try to test again yesterday. And then Friday came and went and there was still no test. Maria said that they heard a lot of pressure and hissing and steam coming out the top of Starhopper, but that's it. The good news is SpaceX has since refiled with the FAA, but not to do a hold down test, but to launch a rocket up to 1,000 feet above ground level. And that notice that Airman goes into effect on Monday and ends on Wednesday. So this could mean a number of things. Maybe over the last few days, SpaceX completed more tests than what we all noticed. And while we're all pretty confident they didn't like the Raptor engine, maybe they decided to move on past tethering tests. Could we actually see Starhopper hop off the launch pad untethered on Monday? Regardless of what happens, something's gotta happen, right? This is SpaceX we're talking about, and things have been happening for a while. In fact, SpaceX's Starship rate of progress is four times faster than the reusable Falcon 9 was. Now this is Starship we're talking about, and that's exactly what you're looking at here in this picture. Remember, Elon confirmed that this is not a replacement nose cone for Starhopper. This is part of the real orbital Starship, and it is rapidly progressing. The picture you're looking at now was taken a few days ago, but just two days later, this one was taken. And what that arrow is pointing to is a new fairing that definitely wasn't there just a few days prior. Maria said that everybody was so focused on Starhopper's first test, that when she finally turned her gaze back to Starship, she found that there was a new fairing there. And here's another angle of the fairing next to an object wrapped in a blue tarp. If any of you have some educated guesses, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. But then there's also this new third piece here. And of course, don't forget about that fourth piece that's hidden behind those containers from before. So yeah, there's a lot more pieces to Starship now. <laughs> Maybe at this rate, they might completely build Starship before they ever get a test Starhopper. But here's something pretty interesting. Maria says that there's a flag that flies on this body of Starship from time to time. And while she doesn't know what it means, she says there's a rumor that it could mean it's when Elon has come to town. When she took this picture, she did say that there were three Teslas going down the road during the Starhopper test, or at least during the time there was supposed to be a test. And yes, you do have a legitimate reason to be jealous of Boca Chica Maria. While I was chatting with her, she decided to throw this picture in my face, one she took out of her bedroom window of Starhopper before it tipped over. The future is being built in the backyard of this woman's house, and <laughs> it's just the coolest thing. So Starship's being built in the backyard of Boca Chica Maria's house and a second one's being built in Cape Canaveral. But you know where it's not being built? At the port of LA, which was the original site for Starship and Super Heavy. But SpaceX wasted no time scrapping that entire facility and everything in it. While we can only speculate Elon's reasoning for moving Starship's development from the port of LA to Boca Chica and Cape Canaveral, we can kind of make educated guesses. For starters, this change of scenery was alluded to after Elon decided to move from a carbon composite material to stainless steel. Couple of that with the logistical and financial nightmare of shipping a fully constructed Starship and Super heavy booster through the Panama Canal. And yes, it's true. California isn't exactly the friendliest state when it comes to taxes. So take that information and do what you like with it. But let's head back to Boca Chica and talk about their Stargate building. So this facility is next to SpaceX's construction site for the Starship and Super Heavy rocket. It's an investment by the local government and it's used for several things, one of them being to track satellites. It's also a training facility for physics students with a goal of producing the future workforce for space exploration. It's also going to be used as an R&D facility in a place where space exploration on entrepreneurs can develop and test their startup products. Whether you love them or hate them, and I don't know why you would hate them, one thing you cannot deny about Elon Musk is that he's very generous, he gives, and he cares about the future for humanity. Take, for example, his recent trip to Flint, Michigan. Elon was a guest speaker at an assembly at a middle school where he encouraged the students to get involved in science. During his presentation, he talked about both SpaceX and Tesla, and even showed some newly rendered footage of Starship landing on Mars. Elon finished his presentation by giving away a free laptop to every student there. 
chair. And this isn't even his first charitable donation to the people of Flint. In December, Musk donated $423,000 to pay for Chromebook laptops for all 7th and 8th graders in Flint Community Schools District. And then before that in October, Musk announced that he would pay for new water stations and water filtration for the school district. And I will add, as a science teacher myself, I am now, twice in the same video, very jealous. I'm sure by now my students are just sick of me showing them SpaceX and Tesla and Hyperloop videos and documentaries and teaching them about the technology behind it. But man, what I would give to have Elon Musk come to my school. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein recently released an interview that he did with Elon Musk while walking the crew arm on Pad 39A before the Crew Dragon launch. And the whole time I was watching this interview while they were standing there with those four other astronauts, all I could think about was, man, I would love to be there right now just observing this in person just soaking in the information. Because here's the thing, guys. We all grew up reading history books in school, science books in class, and we came across names like Einstein or Tesla or Benjamin Franklin or Werner von Braun. And there's that disconnect there like, oh, this was in the past. It would have been awesome just to, you know, experience a moment with them just to kind of, you know, soak in their genius. But we look at them as a part of history. Well, Elon is our modern day Einstein. Just a few generations from now, people are going to look back and say, wow, Elon Musk, look what he did to change the world. He's doing it right now, guys. So there's no reason to think, oh, it would be cool to live in the 60s to watch the Apollo program lift off. And it would be cool. But guys, we have that going on right now. This is the new space race. It has already begun. I remember saying this a few years ago. The new space race is basically here. Well, it is here, guys. It has already started. I mean, just think of all the news that I have just put out the last few months with SpaceX and Boeing and Virgin Galactic. And there are still plenty of other ones out there. And those are just private companies. You still have NASA. You still have China. You have Russia. Israel is now on their way to the moon as we speak. India, the European Space Agency. <laughs> guys, there is no better time for space exploration than right now. You know, some people will try to make the argument, listen, stop wasting money on space. There are other problems here on Earth that we need to take care of. Why are we dumping all this money on space exploration? I just feel that is so short-sighted. Most of our technology today derived from space exploration of the 60s. And we use this technology to help people. Again, I refer you back to what Elon Musk is doing for Flint, Michigan. And that's just one example. Look at what he did for Australia. And he's not the only one doing good things with it. But that's all I'm going to say about that. I apologize. I am a teacher. Sometimes I just get on a roll. But before I end this video, I just want to quickly do something I've been meaning to do for a while now. I just want to take a second and thank all of you guys, my subscribers who have watch this and supported this channel. I want to thank the SpaceX community for having my back and really, you know, encouraging me to do this. And lastly, but most importantly, I want to thank all the local residents of Boca Chica, Texas. These people have been more than supportive of getting the information so I could share it with all of you. These people include, but are not limited to, Boca Chica Maria, Austin Barnard, RGV Aerial Photography, Spader.com, and everyone at the Facebook group, SpaceX Boca Chica. It is such a positive community. I love them all. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and join the family, hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode Psst, and hit that like button. It motivates me to do more of these. All right, I'm out. Godspeed to you.